All right, good morning. How are you all? So today, um, we're just going to review for the midterm. We're going to talk about the midterm. Um, the midterm is scheduled for, uh, what's today, Wednesday? It's scheduled for Friday? Yeah, scheduled for Friday. Sorry, I forget what day it is. So once we take that midterm, I just want to make sure, and I'll go ahead and show you. So here we are. Uh, we're going to do our last day of learning. And then I am available for office hours today at 8, like I normally am. And then on Friday, um, because you're taking the midterm, and I want to clarify, you are not coming to the school for that. You are not setting an appointment. It is just on Canvas, uh, at least for my class. I know some other virtual teachers are choosing other methods, but for me, I am perfectly okay with it being a Canvas quiz. And so Friday, since you're taking the midterm, I don't see any reason to do any direct instruction. And you may see I'm not doing any new direct instruction the rest of the semester. Okay, now I will be here. You can see my office hours start at 730. So I'll be on there for an entire hour. And I'm given these days on purpose. I want to see as many of you pass and be successful in this class as possible. So that's time to get your grade up. Maybe you are already passing, but you want to raise your grade from a C to a B or B to an A. So that's what that time is for. And I will be here during those times. If you have any questions, just log on. You don't have to stay on for the entire hour. Um, I will say though, if you log on, um, sometimes I just do uh, teach one kid at a time, sometimes multiple kids. So if you log in and I'm not there, just wait, I will be there soon. So um, we'll start instruction after break. Um, after break, we'll be learning for approximately a week and then we'll take that unit C test. Okay, so all of this stuff we've been learning in unit C, you're still gonna need to retain for next semester. Other important dates, um, December 18th is the last day that I'm taking work. Everything is worth full points. Um, and I have to turn in grades the December 22nd by 3 p.m. So um, from my understanding at 3 p.m. December 22nd, you will not have access to this class anymore. So if there's anything you want, you better download it, okay? Because once it's gone, it's gone. Um, my YouTube videos and stuff will still be out on YouTube. Your notes will still be on your computer if you downloaded them, but the actual pages won't be there. So let's look. So here we are. Let's talk a little bit about the midterm. So you're gonna notice this counts as practice points, this practice midterm. So if you don't get the score you want on the practice midterm, it's not a big deal. But the one on Friday is a tiny bit bigger of a deal. So you're gonna take the real midterm on Friday I will make it accessible at 7 a.m. Um, and there, if there's an access code, I will email that out to that day at 7 a.m. And I am keeping my midterm as short as possible. I don't really believe in super long tests. So this is gonna pick 10 questions. Now, every student who takes this is gonna get a different set of questions. Okay, I did that on purpose. Um, so when you take your midterm, you don't know which 10 questions it's going to pull. Um, I will say, though, this practice is the same as the midterm. It is the same test. So if you practice this enough, when you take the real midterm, you'll go, oh, I saw that question. I know the answer. So I'm setting you all up for success. Okay, just keep in mind in college, this does not work that way. Um, in college, I would expect a really long midterm. In college, 
sometimes the midterm is almost all of your grade, if not your whole grade. Um, so just want to make sure you understand that, but this is not college. So I'm going to pick one question over quadratic properties, two questions over solving systems, two questions over factoring, one over solving, uh, one over end behavior or multiplicity, and then one over complex operations, one over quadratic forms, and then one over quadratic transformations. All right, notice I am letting you take it up to 10 times for the practice. The real one, you get one shot. Okay, just a one-time thing. And the real one's worth 100 points. So that's, that's the equivalent of like two quizzes, basically. So it's not a huge part of your grade, but it could change it a little bit. Um, and the score to keep for doing an average. Okay, so you're used to it saying the highest. I'm doing an average just so I get an idea of how you're going to do on the real midterm. So I'm going to hit preview and I have no idea what 10 questions it's going to show. And then those are the 10 questions I want to show you. Um, and then we'll be done today. Let's see. And again, some of these questions could be on the midterm. So I could be doing 10 problems for you. All right. Um, some of these questions are super easy. So which equation is represented by the graph? And notice, wow, they gave us lots of options. Um, we need to find the vertex. So I'm going to zoom in here. Can't really see that. And I see the vertex is 3, 1. So I need to choose the equation that has negative 3, 1. So like that is not negative 3, 1. That is not negative 3, 1. This one's negative 3, 1. It could be this one. Let me just check the rest. Negative 3, negative 3, negative 3. Oh, it could be this one too. But looking at that, it's either this one or this one. And the difference is, oops, the difference is, um, is it 3 halves or is it negative 3 halves? Well, let me go look at the graph again. I could. I have access to Desmos. Let's go see which one looks most like it. Y equals 3 halves. I forgot what it was. Oh, negative 3 halves. That's how we flip it over. I'm typing this in wrong. Negative 3 halves x squared. I can't type today. <laughs> now you know what happens when you change the y squared. Oh, it's not even that. Negative 3 halves, x minus 3 squared. There we go. I can type. Um, plus 1. And it still thinks I'm trying to put in an exponent. So is it this one? Or I said it could be this one, negative 2 thirds. So the same thing, but negative two thirds. So there we go. Um, notice the blue is this one. The red is this one. The blue has a y-intercept of negative five. Ours does not. So we need to choose the one that goes down further Looks like it crosses at, what, negative 12.5. And this one, if I had to guess, would cross around negative 12.5. So I'm going to go with um, the red one, which is negative 3 halves, which is this one. Okay, on the district test, you have access to Desmos, so that's why I'm still using Desmos. Question two. Oh, that's a substitution question. So I'll write this down. Y equals negative 2x plus 10. And then Y equals 12 over X. And Okay, well, 
look at it. It says this has two solutions. We'll find out. Oh, I know why. So here we are. We're going to use something called substitution. Um, if they're both equal to y, then they're both equal to each other. So I'm going to say 12 over x is equal to negative 2x plus 10. That is called the substitution property. And then to undo the x in the denominator, we're going to multiply both sides by x. And that'll get rid of the denominator. And then we have 12 equals, and then x times negative 2x is negative 2x squared. And that's why they have two solutions listed because it's a quadratic. Quadratics have two solutions. And then we have x times 10. Okay. And then we're going to move everything to one side to factor it. You always want to move the negative x squared over to the other side to make it positive. So when I move both of those over, I get 2x squared minus 10x plus 12 equals zero. So that becomes positive, that becomes negative if I move it to the other side. From there, I notice that they all have a GCF of two. So I take out a two. Um, I could, if I was feeling lazy, I could just type this into Desmos and see what the solutions are. Um, I'm going to go ahead and finish solving. And then I need to find two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to negative 5. That would be negative 2 and negative 3. So then I get 2, x minus 2, x minus 3. So the solutions would be x equals 2 and x equals 3. Now they also want the y value. Um, so if I plug 2 in to this equation, I'd get negative 2 times 2, which is negative 4, plus 10 is 6. So one solution is 2, 6. And notice that 12 divided by 2 is also 6. That's why 2, 6 is the solution. It works for both. And then the other number was 3. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 10 is 4. y equals 4. And notice that 12 divided by 3 is also 4. So my two solutions are 2, 6 and 3, 4. I type in 2, 6, and 3, 4. Solve the systems of inequalities. Now, um, things that you should know and remember is that if it says greater than, well, first, you need to match the graphs up. Um, I know that the greater than is the red one because it's dotted. Remember, if it doesn't have an equal sign, then it's going to be dotted, or some people say dashed. This one is an equal sign, so it's going to be solid. So this one goes with this one. This one goes with that one. Greater than means you shade above. Less than means you shade below. So if I shade above the red but below the blue, that's going to be region C. Let's say I confused you. You could type that in Desmos. Y is greater than negative 2x plus 1. Ah. See, notice how it's dashed and it's shading on the top. And then Y is less than or equal to x plus 3. And I, I hit less than, then the equal sign to get that symbol. 
Um, y is less than or equal to x plus 3. Zoom out a little bit. And notice they intersect the shading right there. So that's region C, which is why I picked region C. Um, sometimes when you're looking at this, you're like, whoa, 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 where's the plus and minus signs? I found that if you do control plus or control minus, sometimes you could see them after you do that. Um, notice before there was nothing there. And now there is. All right, factor completely. Copy this down. And we may not get through all 10. We'll try. Some of these might be faster than others. Again, I didn't work through any of these beforehand. All right, first thing I see, I look for a GCF. There is no GCF that goes into 12, 2, 30, and 5. They all don't have an X. Um, we're going to use a method that's called factoring by grouping. And what you do is you break this in half. You look on the right side and you look for a GCF of just these two. The GCF of 12 and 2 is 2. X cubed and X squared is X squared. Then you write down what's left over. So that'd be a 6X and a 1. Because 2X squared times 6X is 12X cubed and 2x squared times 1 is 2x squared. Now you do the same thing on the right. Anytime this is a minus, you pull it down. And uh, we will spend a whole day over factoring by grouping when you guys come back. But um, 30 and 5, the GCF is just 5. So that's going to leave a 6x and a plus 1. Because negative 5 times 6x is negative 30x, and negative 5 times 1, negative 5. Now, if these are the same, you factor it out. So I factor out a 6x plus 1, and then I write down the 2x squared minus 5. Now, I seriously doubt they're going to have us factor more than that, so let's go look at the answer choices. Oh, there it is. So I need 2x squared minus 5. That's this one. 6x plus 1. And remember, order of factors do not matter. So when I factored it, I had the 6x plus 1 first. That does not matter. Oh, another factor. Oh, this one's easy. A is 1. I love these. So I wrote down the problem. A is 1. I need two numbers that multiply to negative 30, but add to 13. Well, to multiply to negative, one's going to be positive, one's going to be negative. 15 and negative 2. So that would be x plus 15, x minus 2. Those are my factors. Go over here. X plus 15. And X minus 2 isn't listed. They just want me to pick one of the factors. Find the solutions. Well, that's easy. It's already in factored form. Uh, for 3X, the solution is 0. For negative 4 is 4. And for 2 is negative 2. So I got 0, 4, negative 2. That'd be that one. That one was super easy. Question seven. <clears throat> Use the leading coefficient test to determine the end behavior of the polynomial. Then use this end behavior to match the function with this graph. Okay, I just wanted to get a preview of their options. 
first off, this is a cube. This is a quadratic, so it can't be that. It clearly is a quadratic. That's clearly a quadratic, so it can't be A or B. It could be this one, or it could be this one. Remember, if the leading coefficient is negative, it opens down on the right. So it's going to open down on the right. But because it's odd, it's going to open up on the left. So it should go um, up on one side on the left, down on the right. And the one that does that, I can't remember what I said, falls down on the right. Okay. That'd be this one. It goes down on the right, opposite on the left. If you didn't know that, you have Desmos. You could just type it in and play the matching game. Uh, question eight. Oh, that one's easy. Negative 3i distributed to 7 plus 6i. I wrote it down. So to distribute, I just take negative 3i times 7. That's negative 21i. And then negative 3i times 6i. Negative 3 times 6 is negative 18. And then i times i is i squared. But i squared is negative 1. Negative 18 times negative 1 is positive 18. So I get negative 21i plus 18. And then remember, you're supposed to put the real part first. So we're going to write this as 18 minus 21i. So let's go pick 18 minus 21i. There we go. Question 9. Well, when, the, when they have the carrots in there, it's confusing. Uh, which function is equivalent to this one? Now, you could go type it in and, and play the matching game. It's amazing how easy this gets with Desmos. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually show the word. So it's f of x. This is vertex form. It is negative 4. So it's flipped over and it gets stretched. Um, and then it says the vertex is negative 2, positive 1. And yes, I said the vertex is negative 2 because remember, it's the opposite of this. Okay. But we're supposed to write this in standard form. All right. So first... I'm going to recognize that x plus 2 squared is just x plus 2 twice. Also, I could multiply everything by negative 4, but then it kind of makes it harder. So when you multiply, order that you multiply does not matter. So I'm going to move the 4 to the end. You don't have to. It's just easier, I think. Now, when I say to the end, I mean to the end of this, not way over there. Um, so times negative 4 plus 1. And I'm going to multiply x plus 2 times x plus 2. So that would be x squared to x. To x. And then 4. From there, combine like terms. 2x plus 2x is 4x. And then you could move to negative 4 out front, but it really doesn't matter. But we're going to multiply all three of these by negative 4. 
So that'd be negative 4x squared minus 16x minus 16. Okay, and now we don't need parentheses because we've multiplied everything, so I can put the plus 1. And then I can combine negative 16 plus 1, which is negative 15. All right, there we go. Standard form. Negative 4x squared minus 16x minus 15. I forgot the x on that one. There we go. So we're talking about the parent function. And then we did a graph of negative 1 half x squared. So remember the negative flips it over. We call that a reflection over the x-axis. And then the one half, that makes it wider. Or you could call that um, a compression, it's getting wider. So reflected, compressed. Reflected, compressed is this one. They almost tricked me with the y-axis one, but it's always the x-axis in that form. All right, I'm kind of scared to get my results because what if I missed one? But uh, let's see. Does it tell me? Oh. Well, it did not tell me my score, I guess, uh, because I hit preview and I didn't actually take it. So. It should tell you a score, but uh, other than that, those are the 10 questions that whoever chose for me today. So uh, if I were to take this again, notice, oh, I did get a hundred, good, there it is. But notice, I mean, I got this, I already got, I think I had that question before and I remember the answer. Um, this one's new. This one's new. That one's new. That one's new. That one's new. That's new. That's new. Um, that's new. Oh, and I just had that one. So notice I'm taking this test again, and it's 10 new questions, but two of them are repeats. And so what you'll find is if you take this enough times, the midterm is going to be super easy on Friday. And you have a maximum of 10 times. Um, other than that, I hope you appreciate the easy midterm. I'm trying to keep it easy during this time of, uh, of COVID. I don't want to stress anyone out. So uh, um, other than that, um, like I said, this is our last day of live instruction. Um, those of you that have been coming to instruction, please keep coming next semester. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm available for office hours from 7.30 to 8.30 on even days the rest of the semester. So feel free to log on even if you just want to say hi. But other than that, nice seeing you and, and uh, have a good day.